Hi everyone, it's Celine from Blue Cala Patterns. Welcome to the video for the Plumbago Organizer Pouch. Um, I have wanted to uh, design a pattern for some kind of uh, craft supplies or um, it could be used for like a variety of, of different purposes. It could be even like a really fancy cosmetic bag if you want. Um, but um, I've been wanting to design something like this for a really long time. So um, I've come up with this. Uh, it's it's quite a large pouch. Um, I actually don't have the dimensions in front of me, but if I measure it quickly here, it's about nine inches uh, this way, and then four inches deep, and then about with the frame in and with the bag closed, it's about seven inches high, roughly. I think I have the dimensions written on the cover of the pattern. Um, so right now I have it filled up with all of the uh, supplies that I'm going to need for this video. So I've got a few tools some thread, things like that, just so that I can show you uh, how this bag can be used. So on the exterior, you have this uh, double zipper pouch. It's like a front pocket. And I have it only on one side, but I suppose if you wanted to, you could put it on the other side as well and then really have a lot of storage in the exterior pockets. Now, if you open up the pocket, so there's some elastics here on the, the flat part of the pocket and you can customize. So I've made a suggestion for the placement of these elastics, which I will show you a little bit later on in the video. Um, but you can always customize elastic placements based on what you'd like to put. So in the pattern, I have it set so that it's really meant only for markers and pens and smaller objects like this. Uh, but uh, I made this one for myself and I changed the elastic placement a little bit because I wanted to put my rotary cutter and my seam ripper and things like that. And then I have my tool that I use for poking out corners. And then on the inside part here on the body of the bag, I have two mesh pockets. Um, now I've used uh, cotton fabric. Uh, for the top edge of the pocket, but if you have fold over elastic, you could also use that and then uh, not only will the mesh part expand, but so will the top edge of the, the pocket. So I just have my fray check in here. I'll close this pocket up. The bottom of the bag um, in the pattern, I'm suggesting to use cork or vinyl. I almost always use cork or vinyl for the bottom of the bag because it just prevents the bottom of the bag uh, from getting dirty. Um, and then on one end, the end of the pouch where the, where the zipper, the main zipper opens, I have this uh, handy grab handle. So in the pattern, I mentioned that you can make it out of fabric if you want, or you can just use a piece of webbing. Um, so I'm using a one inch wide piece of webbing. Uh, this is the seatbelt webbing that I sell in my, my shop. Um, just because it just makes speeds things up a little bit if I don't have to sew up a handle but it's really not a big deal if you don't have webbing and you need to make your handle. So there's a handy little pull tab here and then the zipper at the end is a little bit longer and they kind of both work to have something to hold on to when you're opening and closing the bag and there is so this is just a single pull zipper and on this pocket I have a double pull zipper um, and then uh, there's a metal zipper end. So there's really no hardware to this bag except for the zipper end. And inside the bag here, you can't see it, but you'll see it during the assembly. There is a metal frame here. Now I should probably get a frame and show you, so I will do that. So this is what the frames look like. And I did write the size of the frames in the pattern. And they have this 45 degree angle at each end. And then there's these rubber stoppers that just prevents the, uh, the metal ends from tearing up your fabric. So you'll need a set of these frames. And I do sell these on my website as well. So now we're gonna open up the bag. And now because of the frame, it really helps this bag open wide and it helps it to stay open. And then you'll see here, 
the end of my zipper and this pull tab just helps you to open and close the pouch. So inside the bag, this is my first time doing uh, some kind of divided zipper pocket. And I know usually they're done a little bit differently. Uh, but uh, this pocket here, I actually make, made it so that the bottom corners here are boxed. So the bottom of that compartment is as wide as the bag, the exterior of the bag. So uh, on one side here, we have a zipper pocket. I don't have anything in here right now. Um, but it's pretty, it's a nine inch zipper pocket. And then I have my large scissors on one side of the zipper compartment. Then on the other side, oh, this fell out of my pocket, but there's my zipper foot attachment for my machine. And then in this pocket, I have my screwdrivers. And then I didn't put anything here. So once again, this is a mesh pocket and I used cotton fabric. But again, if you have fold over elastic, uh, you can use that to bind the top and the bottom edges of your pocket as well. Now, if I open up the zipper compartment, I have a full spool of thread. This is my rainbow thread and a bottle of glue. But there is way more room in here. Like I can put so many other things in here. Scissors, another rotary cutter scotch tape like there is a lot of room in that middle pouch okay so now the next thing that we're going to do is I'm just going to go over what you're going to need in terms of supplies and notions okay so apart from the obvious things which are the uh, exterior fabrics and your lining fabrics um, and the interfacing that you're going to need. So I, it's always tricky for me to split up the uh, quantities of fabric that you're going to need because everyone likes to do a different uh, fabric placement. Um, I really like to use a few contrasting fabrics uh, if possible. So you'll see that uh, the exterior fabric that I used here, I used as a uh, a lining fabric for my divider pocket and then I'm using the same lining fabric inside and outside so I mean there's so many different combinations and then for my binding pieces and this lining piece and the lining of my zipper pocket I use this plaid fabric so the quantities are just um, a suggestion but I would just say in total to make sure that you have the total amount of fabric uh, mentioned in the supplies list, make sure you have that total amount uh, ready to use for the different parts of your bag. Now I'm going to go through uh, some of the notions that you're going to need um, and I'll show you where they are located on the bag. So to start, here's that the, the webbing that I use for the handle. So I'm using webbing because it just saves me an extra step, but um, if you're making your own handle, you'll see in the cutting chart that it is mentioned. Uh, you'll just have to cut a piece that's six inches by four inches and interface it. Um, in terms of hardware, so it's not in the supply list, but I always like to add a little handmade uh, metal label to my bag. So I'll be adding that in the video just so you can see at which point I do that and where I place it. And then my zipper end. So that's right here there's your metal zipper end so two things that you're going to need and as i mentioned previously those frames now you're going to need uh 20 inches of half inch wide elastic so that's the elastic that we have here inside this pocket so there is a little bit extra in that 20 inches but again like I mentioned previously, it's, this is just in case you want to customize your um, your spacing between your elastics, then it's good to have a little bit extra. Now you're going to need four zippers. So the very first zipper you're going to need is um, a, I believe it's a 15 inch, yes, 15 inch single pull zipper. And that's the zipper used here in the main closure of the bag. So this one here. Then you're going to need a double pull 
zipper that is 16 inches long. So I'm using zipper tape here. So 15 inches. So if you're using a pre-made zipper, I think they come in, they don't come in a 15 inch length. They would come in like a, a little bit less or a little bit more. So 14, 16. So I would go with a 16 inch zipper. It's better for you to have one that's too long than too short because if it's too short, then it might just prevent you from opening your pouch all the way. And it also might make it a little bit trickier to sew. So uh, if you're using pre-made, I would go with a 16 inch. And then for this uh, zipper here, so you can either use 16 inches of zipper tape or you can use a 16 inch pre-made zipper. And when we're adding the zipper tabs here at the end of the zipper, uh, if you're using a pre-made zipper, you're going to be sewing it in three eighths of an inch from the stops at the beginning and the end of the zipper. So that's something really important to keep in mind. And I'm using two pulls. I like double pull zippers on this, this type of pocket. It just makes it easier to open. And also when it's closed, I don't have it, my pull at the bottom here. I have them at the top where I can really see them. There's a lot of great zipper pulls out there, so it's just nicer to show them off at the top of the pocket. Then I, again, I'm using zipper tape, but you'll see this is a little bit narrower. I'm using a number three zipper tape instead of a number five. And one of them is used for this uh, divider pocket, and the other one is used for this interior zipper pocket. And they are both 11 inches of zipper tape. And I think I mentioned in the instructions for the zipper pocket, uh, you can either use 11 inches of zipper tape or you can use uh, a nine inch pre-made zipper. So now we'll set those aside for now. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go through all of the pieces that you need to cut. There is a cutting chart in the pattern on page four. And then the previous page, I've included some photographs of all the different parts of the bag so that you know uh, you can match up the name of the piece that you're cutting uh, and match it to the photographs where I've shown all of the different parts of the bag. So I'm going to go through the list one by one, starting at the top here, the main body pattern piece. So I'm going to show you what that looks like. So this is a rectangular piece. You can cut it to measurements or use the pattern piece provided. And with that piece, you're going to cut out one exterior fabric. So these butterflies, that's going to be uh, what I'm going to use for this, this part of the bag. So I cut out one exterior fabric, one fusible woven interfacing that I'm going to fuse to the wrong side, and then a piece of fusible fleece. Now for all of the fusible fleece pieces for the exterior, I'm going to uh, make a suggestion. Uh, I do like to basically cut the corners here for each of the fusible fleece pieces at the top corners. You don't have to do it at the bottom. It's really more important for the top corners. And the reason why I'm doing that is so these top corners right here is where there's going to be a little bit of bulk because there's fleece on this piece, this piece, and this piece. So if you don't trim away any of your fusible fleece, these corner seams here are gonna get pretty bulky. So you definitely uh, want to consider that uh, and consider just trimming the top corners of your fusible fleece before you fuse it um, on the wrong side over top of the woven interfacing. So just assume for all the pieces, the exterior pieces that have fleece, you're, you might want to consider doing that at the top corners. Now, the next piece is the main pocket exterior. So those are my pieces. Oops, I got my pull tab there. And I'm going to find the pattern piece for that. So that's what it looks like. It is the same size as the main body, but it has the cutout for the pocket. So like I mentioned previously, if you want to put one of these pockets on both sides, you can absolutely do that. If you do want to do that, then you're going to have to duplicate some of your, your pieces. So all the pieces that are used for this side of the bag, this side of the bag, you'll want to cut two of them and just not cut this piece. So you want to duplicate those pieces. Okay, so here's the main pocket exterior. And again, just like the main body, you're cutting uh, one exterior fabric, one fusible woven interfacing, and one fusible fleece. And again, I'm going to be trimming away the fleece at those top corners before I fuse them to just minimize that bulk in those top corner seams. 
The next thing is the front zipper pocket. So this is your front zipper pocket. And the pattern piece looks like this. So you're actually going to print out two copies of that pattern piece. And you're going to cut out one of them along the exterior dash li solid line and one along the interior dash line. And you're going to use this one to cut a little piece of stabilizer. And you're going to use this one to cut out your fabric and your interfacing, your fleece. Basically everything except for the stabilizer. So I'm going to show you what all those pieces look like. So here we go. I have my exterior fabric. So the orange butterfly fabric is always what I'm going to use for my um, exterior. And then I cut two lining fabric. So I'm going to be using the cute little sunshine fabric for my lining. Now I did cut one upside down because um, I was thinking when I open it like this, they will still be both right side up. But that's the directional fabric problem. Um, if you're not using a directional fabric, you don't have to even think about that. But that's what I've done in case you're wondering. Um, so I, uh, I had to cut out three pieces of fusible woven interfacing. So one for each of these three pieces. And then I cut out two fusible fleece pieces. So I cover this in the interfacing section. You're going to trim away half an inch from both of these fusible fleece pieces. Um, and then you're going to fuse one to the wrong side of this piece and one to the wrong side of one of these lining pieces. So because I'm using a directional print, I want it to be this piece right here. So I'm going to fuse the fleece to the wrong side of this piece. Then the second lining piece is going to have fusible woven interfacing. It's going to be this one right here. But then I'm also going to add a piece of Decaville Light, which I cut using the front zipper pocket stabilizer pattern piece. And I'm going to fuse that to the wrong side of this piece. And it just adds a little bit more stability to where your elastics are so that you're not really struggling so much to remove your items out of the elastics. If you don't add it it's or you don't have it it's not a big deal i just like it it just makes this area a little bit more sturdy and easy to use okay so i'm going to set those aside okay the next pieces are the side panels so these are exterior fabric but I'm not using the butterfly. I always like to use a contrasting fabric for the side panels. So that's, I'm just gonna close my pocket here. So that's this piece here and this piece here. So I'm gonna be using this rainbow stripe fabric and it's going to have each a piece of fusible woven interfacing on the wrong side and then a fusible fleece and again, Make sure you just take out a little bit of fleece from those top corners before you uh, fuse them to the wrong side. Next is the bottom piece. So I'm gonna be using uh, black vinyl for my bottom. Again, I almost always use cork or vinyl. I decided to use a black vinyl because I felt it matched pretty nicely with those stripes. And then you're also going to need the bottom firm interfacing. So there is a pattern piece for that. And you're going to print out two copies of this pattern piece as well. And you're going to cut out one along the exterior solid line and then another along the interior dash line. And you're going to use the larger piece to cut the exterior fabric, so the vinyl in my case. And you're going to use the smaller piece to cut out your bottom firm interfacing. And I'm just using Pellon Peltex for uh, my firm interfacing. I also forgot to mention. This is your side panel pattern piece. So there's the dimensions. So cut by dimensions or use the pattern piece. The next is the zipper bands. So the zipper bands are, there is a pattern piece or you can cut to measurements. Um, I did provide a, a pattern piece, but for this one, I always like to use my uh, clear quilting ruler because if I try to cut those pieces with this paper, they will be crooked. So I hardly ever use something this narrow. Um, I cut these all by ruler. Um, so they do have 
to exterior and again so this is it on the bag here this piece here and this piece here Oop, got my little lining piece in there and they like all the other pieces need fusible woven interfacing and fusible fleece on the wrong side of both this time here when you're cutting out uh, the corner it's going to be to remove the bulk here um, I actually would recommend to just trim away the seam allowance along the entire edge here just because this will get a bit thick here where the seams are and we need to insert our frame in the end so it's better if you just trim away the seam allowance at both ends uh, for these pieces before you fuse them to the wrong side. Next is the handle, which we talked about. I'm going to be using webbing, but if you're not, then you just cut your fabric and one fusible woven interfacing piece at the dimensions uh, mentioned in the pattern. Now the zipper tab. So you're going to have four zipper tabs and you cut them to the dimensions in the cutting chart and those we're not going to add any interfacing because if we added interfacing it would get really bulky here we have to actually fold them in a little bit we're folding them in half so if they had fusible woven interfacing it would just get really thick at the bottom so you're just cutting exterior fabric no interfacing for those then your lining fabric so we're getting to our lining pieces now there's only two pattern pieces um, and actually I'm going to skip to the end here just to cover an, the last uh, piece of exterior which is your little pull tab here you're just cutting one little piece of fabric no interfacing and you're just going to cut it to the dimensions mentioned in the cutting chart okay now we're going to move to the lining not to confuse things here so there are two pattern pieces to cut to the um, lining pieces and there are so there are a few pieces that we need to cut to measurement so the main piece is the lining pattern piece so that's this one here and this is a cut on the fold pattern piece so again i'm using those cheerful sunshine this cheerful sunshine fabric um so i have two pieces in the lining fabric and then two pieces of fusible woven interfacing and I fuse those to the wrong side. So that's it. But that's all I'm going to cut with that piece. And then I'm going to do my divider pocket. So the divider, so don't, um, if there's a little bit of difference from this piece to your piece, don't worry. It's just because uh, I printed out early on in the design process. So yours might look a little bit different. Um, so you're going to need two exterior pieces and two lining pieces and we're not going to interface all four pieces because otherwise when we are doing the boxed corners at the bottom here it would get way too thick so my two exterior pieces here so I'm calling them exterior uh, but it's really a lining fabric since it's the inside of your bag uh, but I just in the instructions it's just easier if I can differentiate between the two because the ones that are on the exterior here they are interfaced and the ones that are inside the pouch i'm calling them lining fabric and they are not interfaced because we want to avoid a lot of thickness in those boxed corners so uh, these are going to be my exterior fabrics for the pouch so i'm cut those out in these cute little birds uh, and then the fusible woven interfacing, which I'm going to fuse to the wrong side. And then my sunshine uh, lining pieces, no interfacing on these. Now we're going to cut out the mesh for both of our pockets. So the interior mesh pocket and then the exterior mesh pocket, which you see inside this compartment here. Um, so they are, the, the dimensions are mentioned in the cutting chart. Now these can be a little bit tricky because uh, it is a stretchy material. Um, I like to have it where it stretches this way so that when you put bulky items, they will stretch out to accommodate the thickness of those items. You'll see this side here, not very stretchy. This side here, very stretchy. So you want to pay attention to the stretch when you're cutting. I like to have the stretch going that way. Okay, so cut out your interior pocket mesh and your exterior pocket mesh. 
And then you're going to need uh, the binding. So like I mentioned, um, you can use fold over elastic if you have that. They come in really uh, cute little colors and they will allow your, uh, your, your pockets to expand a little bit more. But I'm just going to use fabric for mine again. I'm using that same rainbow fabric. And uh, it does need to be two inches high. I have a, I just cut the whole width of my uh, yard of fabric, but you only need 36 inches uh, by two inches for that. So we're going to press that and we're gonna cut it into the different size pieces that we need a little bit later on. Then we're going to need our zipper pocket pieces. So. We have a zipper pocket facing piece with matching fusible woven interfacing. And then we have our two zipper pocket lining pieces. And they also have uh, mat uh, matching pieces of fusible woven interfacing. Then the last item is the pull tab, which I've already covered. So in terms of interfacing, I've gone over everything that we need to do to interface our pieces. And don't forget to trim those corners of your um, fusible fleece pieces before you fuse those. And then the only other thing we need to do in terms of preparation is glue this stabilizer to the wrong side of our bottom piece. I'm just going to use my fabric tack. Put just thin beads of glue. And then I like to put something heavy. So you're going to center it. You want an even amount of space all the way around. And then I usually try to find something heavy to put over top. My pouch full of things is kind of heavy. So set that over top. And then I'll just let that dry before I, I start working with it. So that's it for the preparation uh, video. In the next video, we're going to start the assembly of our bag.